again, friends. Suzanne's back, and I have allowed my mushroom soup to simmer in this beef stock for 30 to 45 minutes, and the um, flavors have really, you know, when when we left, when I left you, when we first put the the beef stock in, remember I said it really just tasted like beef stock and nutmeg but really beef stock. Now when I taste it, you can really taste the rich flavor of the mushrooms. And so now we're going to um, use our immersion blender to puree all the mushrooms. But first, I'm going to take some out and just put them in this cup measure, and I'll actually transfer it into there. So I'm, I'm taking out about a cup, cup's worth of mushrooms and onions and garlic so that once we puree the soup, it's not just baby food. We're going we're gonna to retain a cup's worth of these wonderful vegetables in their whole state so that we have something um, to add back into the pureed soup. So right now what I'm doing is pureeing and as usual Coco has to get into the act. Coco is my six pound ten year old Yorkie who has a mind of her own. I have uh, two Newfies, Henry and George, and they weigh approximately 170 pint, uh, 175 pounds each, and they are no match for the six-pound terror that is Coco. I also have two young, 14-month-old. Um, I'm just trying to. I want to get a towel here. Um, I also I'm fostering two little doggies right now. I'm going to just turn this off because I'm going to tilt the pot so I can get a better, more liquid into one spot to do the pureeing. So I'm fostering two little dogs, not little, they're young, they're newfies, and they're 14 months old, and they're brother and sister, and they're full of energy, and I'll tell you a little funny story about them while I puree this. They love to chew food, uh, shoes, but being the typical mischievous youngsters that they are, they only ever chew one shoe from each pair. So when I tell you that they've chewed three shoes, that's three pairs of shoes that are no longer functioning because one of each one of each shoe in the pair is completely messed up. So here I am, I am doing this pureeing and honestly it would probably be a lot better if I were to um, put it in a food processor and just, you know, puree the you know what out of it. But I'm not going to because I kind of like this. Um, I'll give it a, another little spin here. I kind of like the texture. You know, I don't, I really don't like, you could probably have a perfectly smooth um, soup, but I don't really think I want that. I think I'd like a little bit of the texture from the mushrooms. And, and of course, we're gonna add back in the mushrooms that we have there. Um, but this is again your choice. This is what, this is where your personal preference comes in. And you can choose if you want, if you want something that's perfectly smooth, by all means put it into a, a food processor or a blender and blend away to your heart's content. I'm not going to. But what I am going to do is turn this on and I'm going to turn it on to low and this is where we're going to I'll start off by adding a little bit
bit of this half and half. Well, let's say we start with a quarter cup. And then I'm going to add a little bit of cream cheese. And I've turned the, the, the fire back on underneath the, um, underneath the, the pan. And um, I'm going to add some cream cheese and let all of this begin to cook. And then I'm going to add some of my Parmesan just a little bit because you can add more later as a topping. But So what you're going to add now, so there you go. This is probably about two tablespoons worth of cream cheese. And we're going to let this melt down and add some creaminess to our wonderful soup. And what I was going to say is that, and I'm looking for, oh, there it is. I'm looking for my, my grater for my cheese. What I was going to say is that once you've added in these creamy elements, then I would suggest you go back and, oops, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm adding in Parmesan Reggiano, my faithful little grater. Um, taste it, and then decide if you want to add some more flavors. Um, again, I doubt that you want any salt because of the the beef stock that you've put in there, which which I've used. Um, if you were using something that has um, a much lighter flavor, like a vegetable stock, you might indeed want some um, salt. But for beef stock, so far I've tasted it and I just don't find the need for any salt. Um, and I'm looking at this as it melts, and I think I'm going to add another two tablespoons of cream cheese. And um, so, if you're not going to add salt, what would you add? Well, you might want to add some more pepper. Um, you might want to, you know, of course, add more uh, nutmeg. It's at this point you're really entering into the realm of your personal preference. Um, you might even want to add some more red wine. What you want is to create a soup that meets your expectations and your flavor profile. Um, because in the end, that's what cooking is all about. So I'm adding this, I think I'm going to add a little, little bit more cream. This is half and half. Um, and I'm going to get my immersion blender in here and just get all of this mixed in. This will help the cream cheese to get mixed in a little bit better. And we've got the half and half in here. And then I'm going to taste it and see what this soup needs next. I've got a feeling that this is going to be really delicious. Oops, I forgot. I have some little toasts that are going in the oven. Holy mackerel. Look at these wonderful little crostini I made for to go along with my soup. And I'm going to put them how about right over here. Um, it's a good thing I got the idea that I should get them out. You know where I got the idea for these? Was um, Whole Foods sells these little toasted crostini, but they're quite expensive. They sell them for like five dollars for a box, and all I could think of was that's a lot of money to spend on toast. And so, um, I've gotten very ambitious and made my own, which is very easy to do. It's literally, um, mm, holy mackerel. If you like escargot, you're going to love this soup. Um, 
so I took a I took a French baguette, cut it into little little you know toasts like that, little slices. Um, put them on this. Let's see if I can hold this up. Put them on this cookie sheet. Gave it a good sprinkling, a healthy sprinkling of olive oil, garlic powder, and uh, salt. And then you put them in a 350 oven and keep an eye on them. I'm very bad at keeping an eye on things, but keep an eye on them. Uh, flip them over about halfway through and let them get toasted. These are wonderful. And, um, and then use them in your soup. Or, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we have some, some brie, and I'm going to use it in that. And you probably can't see, but I'm truly making a mess of the backsplash um, with the splattering of the soup. But that's just because I'm using this shallow pan, which I probably shouldn't have used. But that's okay. We'll clean it up afterwards. And what I'm going to do now is put in a little bit more cheese. And I think just a little bit more nutmeg. And then I think we can call this puppy done. Because I think it's fantastic. But we're going to give it a final test, taste test, after we do this. Oh, I forgot one more thing we have to do. We're going to give that a stir, and then I'm going to add back in those whole mushroom pieces and onion and garlic. Okay? We're going to give that a little stir, and then I'm going to get a bowl and serve this and just show you how delicious this is. One minute, okay? I'm going to get my bowl over here. And, let's see, where do I have, you know, I never seem to have exactly what I need in the moment. The good news is, what I need is always nearby. So, here we go. This is so delicious. All right. I wish you could be here to see this. Now what I'm going to do, so here's my soup, and I'm going to take one or two of these little toasts and just float them on the top, if you can see that, and then give this, Coco's getting excited, give this a little scraping of Parmesan on top, and There you have it. That is the perfect soup for a winter's evening. Mmm. Oh my goodness. If you have, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up next week. This would be the perfect starter for Thanksgiving. Mmm. Or as mom and I are going to have it tonight, this is our dinner. We have, I've got some brie that I've put out, some slices of salami, but this wonderful soup is the main course. We've got mushrooms, garlic, um, onions, mmm, but you can really taste the mushrooms. The mushrooms have not gotten lost. The nutmeg is adding warmth and richness and yet it's not overpowering because again we layered our flavors and um, and we didn't puree it to smithereens so that it tastes like baby food this tastes like an adult soup you're gonna love this please give it a try as you can see it's very simple mmm the little crostini Add a wonderful crunch. Henry's coming. Mmm. So that's it. 
Here's Henry. Henry, say hello. Look at Henry. Hello, Henry. If I give him a Christine, he'll you'll be able to see him. Oh, there he goes. So enjoy making soup at home, especially on a wonderful winter night. And uh, invite the family and friends around the fire to enjoy it with you. And I'll see you again next time in Suzanne Elizabeth's kitchen. Whoops. Cheers.